The U.S. turned down Australia's request to stop its pursuit of Julian Assange. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was in Brisbane, Australia this week for high-level talks about military cooperation. According to The Guardian, the Australian government broached the topic of Assange several times, but Blinken fended off suggestion that the U.S. hunt for the WikiLeaks founder should end. Here's what he said in a press conference in Australia. Let's watch. Assange was charged with very serious criminal conduct in the United States in connection with his alleged role in one of the largest compromises of classified information in the history of our country. Uh, the actions that uh, he is uh, alleged to have committed risked very serious harm to our national security, to the benefit of our adversaries, and put named human sources at grave risk, grave risk of physical harm, grave risk of detention. So I say that only because just as we understand sensitivities here, it's important that our friends understand sensitivities in the United States. Here to dive deeper into this is Editor-in-Chief for The Gray Zone, Max Blumenthal. Welcome back, Max. Good to see you. So uh, Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. The interests there are clear, and apparently the Australian government sees this as a litmus test in some ways um, for Australia's influence and pull uh, as it negotiates with America here. One of the things that's, that it's raised is the seeming disconnect between Obama commuting Chelsea Manning's sentence, but still pursuing Julian Assange when Chelsea Manning's was, was the one that ultimately um, offered the information to the media and the public. What do you make of this? Well, on a geopolitical level, this really highlights Australia's role as an imperial subcontractor. Uh, as a journalist, it shows the hypocrisy of Secretary of State Antony Blinken's initiative to promote global press freedom. And it emphasizes the absurdity of the prosecution of Julian Assange under a World War I era uh, uh, law, the Espionage Act, over uh, publishing classified documents the same way Bob Woodward did in his book on Obama. And so we have to parse all these issues out. But Anthony Blinken, for him to say that Julian Assange severely damaged national security, contradicts what even the Pentagon said, uh, that no WikiLeaks cable harmed or led to the death of a single U.S. service member. There's simply no evidence there, and classified documents are published all the time. So this is about vengeance by a political clique within the Biden administration for the 2016 election. It's about vengeance by the CIA for the Vault 7 cables. It is not about international law, the rule of law, or protecting press freedom. You mentioned uh, Bob Woodward. Um, he's someone I still see on, uh, on mainstream uh, television <laughs> channels, uh, on news channels giving his uh, very informed views about the news of the day. Uh, at the same time, someone who, as you point out, Julian Assange did the exact same thing, exposed secrets the government didn't want you to know about. Um, is his cause still at all, if it ever was, being taken up by mainstream people that you know purport to hold up American democracy and its tradition of free speech and media freedom is so unique in all the world and so aspirational? Well, there's a reason Woodward and Bernstein are upheld as these paragons of in journalistic investigative integrity. It's because they never truly posed any real threat to the system. I mean, Carl Bernstein was sort of trotted out to hype up the Russiagate hoax and call it worse than Watergate. And Bob Woodward, um, he's just a, the, the quintessential access journalist. The reason that the Biden administration is hunting and seeking to physically and psychologically destroy Julian Assange and his entire organization is because he simply embarrassed the U.S. national security state. Uh, give, I could give the example of Khaled al-Masri, a German citizen who was ca um, kidnapped by the CIA in a case of mistaken identity, brutally tortured and sodomized in CIA dungeons, and then just sent back onto the street. And were it not for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, he would, his case would have been unknown. There would have been no proof that this ever happened. I'm here in Nicaragua right now. I can give the case of uh, a uh, woman who was whose testimony was used in the tw 2006 election in an attempt to prevent Daniel Ortega, the Sandinista leader, from 
winning. She had accused him of having an affair with her. She happened to be his stepdaughter. And WikiLeaks cables revealed that the U.S., through the State Department, was paying her tens of thousands of dollars to go on speaking tours around the world denouncing him. So whether it was true or not, this is the kind of thing that embarrasses the State Department. It embarrasses the national security state. And Julian Assange has done this more than any other journalist. That's why they're after him. Interestingly, the Australian government has used the line, they want this to be brought to conclusion. They want resolution in the in the matter of Julian Assange. They haven't specifically said what that means, whether or not they want the prosecution to be dropped entirely or whether or not they're pushing for some kind of plea deal. You know, that being the case, you know, how do you look at Australia? Are they kind of the uh, kind of a heroic in this in this effort to wrest back control over how what determines uh, Julian Assange's fate here? Or is there still some chance that even though they're uh, pushing uh, for extradition, he could still face significant charges in Australia? Well, we'll see if Australia hasn't been completely annexed by the United States as a forward operating base in the future war against China. If uh, based on this case of Julian Assange, because uh, the left of center Labor Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is pushing openly for Assange's release. He brought it up in the meeting with Blinken and Blinken flatly said no. And at the same time, Australia announced new deals to manufacture missiles for the United States. There's the whole AUKUS alliance, which is really central to understanding why Australia is having so much trouble getting one of its citizens back from the U.S. The um, Australia, U.K., U.S. military alliance is completely compromising Australia's sovereignty. I mean, you have a joint intelligence base being built in Canberra. You have weapons contractors like BAE Systems training Australian youth to be future arms contractors. You have all of these nuclear subs supposedly being delivered to Australia in the 2030s. We don't even know if that'll be possible. In the meantime, Australia's government is subsidizing the U.S. Navy to build these subs. And uh, uh, Clive Fernandez, a former in Australian intelligence officer, has written an entire book about how Australia has sacrificed its sovereignty to the United States against the mantle of AUKUS. Uh, this is why it's impossible for Australia now to even take care of its own citizens, citizens like Julian Assange, who should be back in Australia walking free were it not for Australia as a de facto U.S. military colony. Hmm. Does the AUKUS relationship not give Australia some leverage potentially to use to get uh, Julian Assange back? Or are they just so disempowered that that's not even a, a position they can take? Well, the Australian power structure is dedicated to AUKUS. That's why it was willing to stab France in the back. Aust Canberra had a deal to buy 80 diesel subs from France. And at the 11th hour after signing this deal, Aust Canberra ripped it up in order to join the AUKUS alliance with the U.S. And they're doing so out of economic opportunism. They believe that advancing their defense industry will uh, supercharge the Australian economy and give it access. And this is according to like Australian think tankers from arms industry funded think tanks like the Lowy Institute, uh, that it will give them access to technology they wouldn't have already had. So it's, it's opportunism and it's diplomatic suicide because Australia has never had more U.S. military activity on its territory, and therefore it has never had less sovereignty. Before we let you go, Max, I wanted to ask you about some news that emerged yesterday after RFK Jr. sat down with uh, popular comedian and podcaster Jimmy Dore for a, a conversation. Many people in the, in the chat seem to want you to talk to him specifically head to head because of their frustration with some of his views on Israel-Palestine. He apparently agreed, and you tweeted that that debate is pending. Do you have any more details about when we might be able to look forward to seeing you in a, in a head to head exchange with RFK? Jr. Yeah, I I do. So J Jimmy asked RFK, he said, you know, I'm not an expert on Israel-Palestine, but a lot of what you're saying about Palestinians being simply a bunch of terrorists and Israel only attacking military targets and Israel just being this, th th this beacon of democracy surrounded by enemies doesn't sound true to me. It doesn't ring true. So why don't you debate someone like Max Blumenthal, for example, who has dedicated years of their journalistic career to covering this issue. You know, I've written two books, done a documentary on it. Um, I think I'm qualified 
I'm, I'm, I'm at least as qualified as RFK to talk about it. And RFK is someone, you know, I've been sympathetic to his campaign. I sympathize with several planks of his campaign. So it's not as though I'm coming at him in bad faith and that I'm seeking to destroy him on behalf of the Biden administration or some <laughs> other force. So I think it would be a civil debate. RFK seemed blindsided by Jimmy's question. Jimmy brought up Peter Peter Hotez, the doctor who RFK had been trying to debate, who shied from the debate, and mm -hmm. RFK agreed. But what I've heard, uh, I have a source, and I may actually be able to, to publish this, I'm not sure, um, but I have a source who spoke to RFK's communications director, Stephanie Spear, and she completely took off the table any possibility of him doing a debate on Israel. This is while RFK is running around, RFK Jr. is running around with Shmuley Botiach, an operative of the Adelson family, the far-right Likudnik family that funded the Trump operation, named for the late Sheldon Adelson, who sought to called for dropping a nuclear bomb on Iran. He's running around with him going to Israel pride parades and doing making, in RFK's words, the case for Israel. So I think he should engage with uh, people who sympathize with his campaign uh, in the same way and demonstrate the integrity of his position. But that doesn't, I, I actually am increasingly pessimistic hmm. after what I've heard in the last few hours. That's disappointing to hear. I, I think a lot of people were really heartened by his seeming openness to talking with you. Uh, I still hope that somehow yeah. it ends up manifesting, but thank you so much for all of your reporting on that issue area. And of course, all of the uh, conversation that we've had about Australia and Julian Assange today. Thanks, Max. Thanks a lot, Brianna.